Welcome to Wizardry. I was sitting at my desk working on my newest diorama when it struck me. I have never purchased manufactured grass tufts. I plan to, but I've always made my own. So I decided that I could show you various ways that I make the ground cover for my dioramas. With my scraps of foam cut and baking soda ready, I grab an old paintbrush and cut a diagonal clump. Holding the clump loosely, but firm, I tap the ends until they all match up horizontally at the base. Any stragglers can be pulled out or trimmed off. I then clamp the tuft and apply super glue. The bristles soak up the glue readily. Then tap onto the foam scrap piece and cure it by wiping it through the baking soda. Here I've cut off some severely worn out bristles that will make a nice tangle of grasses or vines. Since it was such a mess, I twisted them to a point on one end, clamped and trimmed to have my flat base. If you noticed, the first brush I used had a light tan bristles topped with white, and they were frayed. They gave the example of a lot of the ornamental grasses you see in people's yards. This brush, however, is more representative of cattails the variance from brush to brush can give you quite an array to choose from. And the nice thing is, if you're looking for dead grasses, those natural colors are the ones you will likely find on your paintbrushes. I realize the clumps I'm making are extraordinarily tall. That's for the camera. Although I usually do go taller than I need and then trim down. This clump here is from the first brush that we'd taken bristles off of. Notice the nice tufts on the top. Here I'm spreading out the base to make a larger footprint. I usually do this for massive clumps, shrubs, or thorn bushes. What I like about this method is now I can shape, trim, color, whatever it needs before it goes on the diorama. Next up, an old worn out scouring pad. These make great shrubbery. You just rip off the size of chunk you think you need, spin it between your fingers, clamp it, glue, foam, baking powder, and you're done. And not all pads are created equal. This one has a different color and texture than the previous one. And just like the grasses, they can be manicured, colored, shaped, to fit the diorama. Here's another run through, using the bristles off the first brush. You don't always have to use super glue. If you leave the grass clamped, you can use PVA glue. Or you can use UV resin, as I'm doing here, and also not using a clamp. But if you're not looking for dead grasses, that's where the next step comes in, washes. Nightmare Landscapes has a great variety of colors. Of course, you can easily use paint or Thin down your paint to a wash or glaze consistency. When doing this, I tend to use a fan brush, but any with the stiff bristles will do. I just prefer the way the fan brush seems to easily reach between the grass blades and it doesn't clump. I like to experiment with color changes and combos in the grass for a more natural and random appearance. Not only natural looking, I guess, but you can also end up with exotic or alien looking vegetation by playing around with the colors. You can give the shrubs the same treatment as the grass. Here I'm putting little red flowerettes on this small shrub. And here's an example of some of the looks and colors that you can come up with. 
These are very subdued colors and I haven't trimmed or shaped them or paid near the attention to them that I would for a diorama, but it gives you a good idea of the overall diversity that you can come up with using this method. You'll notice that I have poster tack holding many of these up. This is because they're so darn tall and they aren't meant to stand alone, but the base at the bottom really does help when putting them in a diorama, even if I'm sticking them in a hole that I'd punched. Here is another grass stand-in that I often use in my dioramas, twine. Just tie a knot a little longer than what you want your grass to be. Then take your UV resin and liberally coat it all the way around. Cure it, cut below your resin, and you have a tuft. And obviously, you can use PVA or super glue to do this as well. Now we're going to add some flowers to our shrubbery. First, I'll dip the twine into this watered down PVA glue and then into some crushed crayon. Old dry down sponges work great too. You can find any color you can think of. They are cheap and will last a long time. Simply grate the dried sponge to a powder and do the glue dip technique. Here's the same technique, but this time I'm using the brush to apply the glue. And then I'm gonna use Nightmare Landscapes basing material. Another good way is clean sieved sawdust. Oh, and I almost forgot this little trick for using the scenic grass. And there you have it, some of the tricks and tools I use to make floral for my dioramas. Please like, share, comment. If you have anything you want me to cover, please let me know. And please subscribe. I'd love to keep bringing these videos to you. Until next time, I'm Wes, and this is Wizardry.